Schechter John Brown, Tau 7. Oh, man. Let's check this beauty out. Review time. Let's go. Time for the specs for the Schechter Tau 7 John Brown signature guitar. All right, we have the purple, trans wall transparent purple flame veneer on the headstock with uh, the Wenge kind of uh, lining just underneath. We have the hipshot locking tuners, graph tech tusk nut, uh, no inlays on the fretboard but you do have oh it's already kind of glowing and it's very bright in here uh lumen lay side dots which are great uh 24 extra jumbo stainless steel frets 16 inch fretboard radius and we have the Signature John Brown Schecter USA pickups. So we have the Colossus Bridge Chaos Breaker in the neck. Both are Alnico 5 magnets, if I'm not mistaken, and I think they're rough cast Alnico 5. So that will also impact the sound. We have a hip shot bridge, which I'm usually quite a fan of, and in this case, still am. All right, the finish on this beauty is, oh, I'm starting to get a little blurry here. There we go. Is a uh, transparent purple with a flame maple veneer on the top. We have a volume, just one volume push-pull. We have a three-way selector switch, and it's a mini toggle, which I am a big fan of. The big toggles, well, the regular toggles, standard toggles, stick out way too much. Um, and I don't know, they're less precise. They feel kind of less solid. This one's very solid, feels really good. All right, let's flip it over here. Oh, as you can see, uh, the maple here is a thin veneer on top of the swamp ash body. over four bolts on the neck and we have this oh, excuse my sweat very very beautiful when five piece neck which is Wenge and Paduk I'm not sure if it's Paduk or Paduk uh, I haven't looked up the pronunciation 
Either way, it is gorgeous. It's very dark. I'm a big fan of like chocolatey brown Wenge. It just looks so good, in my opinion. As you can see, this is a 2023 make from South Korea. There's those hip shot open gear locking tuners. Uh, the next shape, I believe, is a ultra thin U, if I'm not mistaken, or it could be a thin U. Uh, quite comfortable. It is definitely a U shape, so it's more kind of flat on the back and has more shoulder on the sides here, a little more of a curve on the shoulder. Uh, pretty simple layout for the guitar, actually. Um, pretty high spec, but uh, just a simple workhorse guitar, and uh, I'm really liking it so far. It is beautiful. The This veneer is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Looks amazing. In the camera, it's picking up kind of more of a pinkish. Uh, in person, looking at it here in the light, I'm getting more of a, a darker purple, like a dark artist purple or magenta. Uh, the headstock is always looking a little darker in most lighting situations. And I believe that's it. For those who are wondering, I have a set of strings on for 11 to 52. I have a Dario and a 74, and this is in drop F sharp. Oh, the scale length of the guitar is 27 inches. I forgot to mention that. Uh, one thing to note, so I don't forget later, is that the tech had to uh, open up this tuner a bit because it would not fit the 74. Um, whose fault is that? Should Schechter know that people are going to use thick strings on the seven string? <laughs> Uh, probably, but that's hip shots, uh, area. Uh, I hear that hip shot has an allowance of 60 string gauge. So anything above that they will do, um, but you have to order it as such. So I'm not sure how Schechter does it because I know they have a seven, uh, an eight string model that comes with a 80 on the low end, so obviously a hip shot would have to open that up and use their um, special tuners for the eight string. Uh, that said, I feel like they should have special tuners for the seven string as well. This came with a 56. Um, I think it should also accept something like an 80 on the seven string as well. Um, hip shot, I believe for the eight string, when they provide those special eight string tuners, um, can allow a 90. Uh, just for those who are interested in the 8-string, uh, you can definitely get uh, a 90 on the 8-string model. But yeah, uh, just a simple opening up of the hole. Uh, very simple, very quick. Not a big problem. And we got uh, got a 74 in there pretty easily. So just uh, one thing to keep in note, keep in mind. Oh, one thing I almost forgot. Uh, spoke wheel for the neck adjustment truss rod. And that's it for the specs of this guitar. All right, let's talk about a few QC issues. Were there any QC issues? Yeah, mainly just one, uh, I would say. Uh, so back here, as you can see where the control cavity is, well, when I took a look at it, when I first took it out of the box, uh, there was a bunch of black, uh, looked like paint, light paint, uh, just coming out here. Um, what it was, uh, what I suspected, was that it was some of the black shielding paint that, when it was being applied, came out onto the body. Uh, so that would be what I would consider a QC issue. Uh, that, however, not a big deal because I got the tech at the guitar store to just clean that off, and he got it off no problem. Um, so one thing to be aware of, just like any guitar, um, especially the average high-end Indonesian or high-end Korean guitar from Schechter, LTD, whatever, Jackson, um, 
you're likely to get some small, you know, finish issues here and there. That's pretty standard and common, but the build quality is usually quite high uh, for the price and to get build quality much higher, uh, you're going to be paying a lot more. So that's always a good sign. And with this one, uh, about the same. So another thing to notice, I wouldn't call it a QC issue. Maybe I would call it, I'm not even sure what to call it because I'm not sure where along the line this happened. It could even be just a factory thing or a choice that Schechter made or even hip shot, sent from the wrong ones. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the seventh uh, string tuning peg wouldn't accept uh, the 74 gauge that I had on the bottom here. So the tech, again, at the guitar store, just had to open up the hole a little bit. Again, very easy, not a problem in order to get the 74 in there. Um, generally speaking, hip shot, uh, the majority of their tuners won't go above, won't accept something above 60 or so. Uh, so I think this is probably the case here. Uh, the stock strings that come on it are a 10 to 46 and a 56, if I remember correctly. Um, so if you're looking to get something like a 10 to 56 set or a 10 to 59 set from D'Addario, uh, then you're fine, right? Not an issue. Um, assuming they all come with tuners that are only uh, max at 60, but I don't know that for sure. It could be just this one. Um, either way, uh, something to be aware of. So if you want to use something lower than a 60, you're going to have to uh, route out the hole, which is annoying, especially for a seven string guitar. Um, for the eight string, uh, they already thought this through, I guess because the seventh tuning peg on the eighth string comes stock with, I think, a 62 gauge or something along those lines. So my guess is, is that it has a wider hole, uh, much like the wider hole you get with the 70, I think it's a 74 or an 80 gauge on the eighth string. I'll have to check. Either way, it's a 74 or an 80 on the eighth string, and it accepts it just fine, obviously. I'm pretty sure the seventh string is like a 62 or a 64 or something and accepts that fine as well on the eight string model. So I don't know if it was an oversight not adding the uh, hip shot tuners with the larger holes um, on the seventh string, or if it was just um, a factory mishap, someone grabbed uh, one of the regular tuners uh, for the first six strings and put it on the seventh without putting the one that has a greater acceptance. I don't know for sure, um, but hip shot again, the standard tuners are, uh, won't go above 60, um, but you can request um, a, a larger hole. And I think they will allow up to a 90, generally speaking. So again, I don't know if the tuning peg put on my seven string was the incorrect one at the factory, or if it was just an oversight in the design or manufacturing, I don't know. Um, either way, not a big deal. Just know that you're going to have to do that potentially if all the seven strings come with um, the tuner on the seventh that will only allow a 60 maximum. <laughs> So is this guitar overpriced, like a lot of people would have you believe online? No, I don't think it is at all. I think it's very well priced, especially considering 2023 prices, uh, late 2023 prices going to 2024. 
I mean, this is right in line uh, with pretty much the majority of offerings on the market from the mainstream um, brands. So I wouldn't consider this overpriced at all. It is made very well. Uh, probably as, I would say it's one of the nicest Korean Schecter, Korean mega guitars that I've played from Schecter, LTD, Jackson. The nut is cut very, very well. It's flush with the sides. Um, there's no tuning issues, so it was slotted properly. The, yeah, the, the neck looks great, it feels great. It's different than a lot of other Schecter guitars because it has more of a, a flat back where more Schecter guitars you'll see are more C-shaped, more rounded. This one has uh, a different neck profile where it's flatter on the bottom on the back so just something to get used to almost kind of ibanez ish a little bit um so just something to keep in mind stainless steel frets fret work is great uh, nothing special with the ends no like super high rounding or anything like that um but the ends are perfectly well done uh the fret edges are great there's nothing sticking out no sharp fret ends at all uh, level again level frets everything's great I really really dig the the split coil tones actually again some of my favorite high gain split sounds are coming from these pickups they're just really good in that department really impressed I didn't think I would like them that much but I find myself just just jamming around on them because that twangy snarl just sounds so good The pickups just in general are very good. This is my first time trying Schecter USA pickups uh, on my own rig. Uh, I've tried them before on amps and stuff in guitar stores, but I, I like to, as much as possible, reserve judgment. Um, until I can get it on my own rig, so I'm, I'm used to the sound and the tonal qualities that I would expect, um, so I can tell the differences uh, with more precision. Uh, but yeah, these are really, really good, really, really good. Um, kind of, I would say they're pretty, they're tight in the low end. They have a pretty, they have a little bit of a pushed mid-range, not excessive, but it's pushed, and they have 
uh, kind of rolled back treble, but they have a kind of a spiky, spiky high mid. Not spiky as in like, oh, it's super harsh, but you get a lot of push in the high mid frequency. So it gets that crunch tone coming out really well, very percussive sounding. Um, if you listen to, to John Brown, a lot of those frequencies really pop out for him in his recordings and his playing style. And I think that, you know, that's obviously why he made these pickups uh, in that way or designed them with Schechter for those purposes. Um, kind of, it's not like a bare knuckle juggernaut at all, but it has that similar quality where a juggernaut has that high mid push. That's really, that really comes out, really pops. Uh, this one has something similar to that. Not the same frequencies, but a similar characteristic in that there's a high mid push that makes it really crunchy um, and makes those tonal qualities really, really stick out and come out in the mix. Uh, but again, not near as pronounced as like a juggernaut, for example. Kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, I won't even go there, maybe like some Blackhawks or something. But again, maybe not as, yeah, something like Blackhawks almost, but not as thick. Um, yeah, uh, these are awesome. Uh, the neck pickup's also very great. In its own right, yeah, uh, I would not recommend changing the pickups unless you want something specific or you don't like these pickups because uh, overall they're very well done. They're very good. I think most people buying this guitar will likely leave the pickups in. They'll like them quite a bit, I assume. <laughs> So yeah, going back, overpriced? No, this is great. I mean, if you look at Schecter prices in 2023 for their high-end Korean models, uh, what, even some of their Indonesian high-end models, they're, they're in the same, they're very close in price actually. Um, and some of those aren't even artist models, right? So again, look at LTD Korean models coming out of the same factory artist models there's maybe a couple that are in this price range the rest of the ltd artist models are just crazy crazy high we're talking like almost e2 prices e2 esp uh made in japan prices so it's it's pretty crazy to get a korean artist model coming out of this factory world music uh, for this price with these features again you're getting hip shot tuners hip shot bridge you're getting Schecter usa pickups you're getting the Wenge Paduke neck, um, stainless steel frets. You're getting the Lumen Lay side dots, right? It's you're getting all of the the high end aftermarket style features that a lot of modern players want, and the build quality is quite good. It's very solid. You don't pick this up and be like, oh, it feels cheap or or, or a, like a lesser quality instrument. It's a great instrument. Um, very much worth the money. So, where are we gonna go from here? Well, grab one of these purple beauties for yourself, or they just dropped um, one in the azure blue, which also looks good. Uh, either way, whichever finish option you get, 
you'll probably, probably really like the guitar, odds are. So if you're afraid of getting one because of people on the internet saying it's overpriced, it's not worth it, had they even played the guitar? Probably not, so remember that. Um, so this is Mike from Gearheads signing off. You have yourself a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.